Hi, in some of our previous videos, we covered how you design an EMC filter in a step-by-step -step manner. In this video, we are going to show you some experimental results. Okay, so here I have got a uh, isolated flyback converter. This is exactly the type of converter that we use during our filter design workshops. And I am measuring its spectrum using a Siglent spectrum analyzer. At the moment, I'm looking at a frequency range of 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, but this is too wide. So I need to narrow down the range a little bit so that I can see the spikes. If I look at, let's say, up um, two megahertz, so I press frequency, then a stop frequency, and I set the stop frequency to two megahertz, you can immediately see these spikes, which is the spectrum uh, of, this, of this particular power supply. Um, what I can do now is actually freeze this, and then we can compare how these spikes are attenuated with and without the differential mode filter first, and then common mode filter. So in order to freeze this, you go to, um, trace, so you press the trace button, right? And on trace B, at the moment it's on clear write, so it keeps rewriting, clearing and rewriting, and you can see, see it jiggle about because it keeps measuring. So if I press max hold button just for a few seconds, that basically holds the maximum, and then I just press the view button, and then that just freezes it. You can now see that I have got a yellow trace underneath. Both traces, the yellow and the purple, were on. So now the purple is frozen. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a differential mode filter. Again, this is exactly the type of filter that we teach uh, you how to design during our workshops. Uh, and uh, I'm going to add this, and we'll see how the spectrum changes. So uh, please always take this off so that you don't damage the front end of the spectrum analyzer and then I'm going to add the filter this is only a differential mode filter with no common mode filtering and then you connect spectrum analyzer again and you can see that these yellow spikes have pretty much disappeared but the first spike has not really gone down that much. I mean, it's still gone down by about 10 dBs, but this will still fail the test. In order to see what these frequencies are, you only have to press the peak button, and you can see that immediately fires the peak. Uh, this power supply is switching at around 210 kilohertz, and you can see that the, the marker is at 210 kilohertz, and you have got 84 dB microvolts on the peak of the yellow trace. Okay, um, so, uh, at the moment, this does not have a pi capacitor. Again, in the previous videos, we discussed um, how you add an extra capacitor on the input, and but you can already see that it's attenuated quite a bit. If I add the pi capacitor in, you can see that this peak fell from 84 to around 59. Just, if I take it out, it gets to 84. As soon as I add it in, the first peak just gets attenuated down to 67. And that's why we teach how you design a Pi filter as opposed to just a standard, a standard LC filter. This is only differential mode, so if I go to full span frequency, um, which in my case is only up to 30 megahertz, you will see that um, its impact, even with the filter, this is the uh, yellow trace now, even with the differential mode filter, I still have big noise. Um, because this is common mode noise, and this is a differential mode filter, so it is not doing anything to the common mode. However, I have designed a common mode filter. So what I can do now is actually replace this differential mode filter with that common mode. I won't bother saving the trace for now. You can see how much it will be attenuated. Just bear in mind that around here we've got about let's say 90 dBs peak here, but you'll immediately see the peak fall. So I take my differential mode filter out. Oh, I was naughty, we need to take this off first. I add in my common mode filter. Again, we teach how you design these. There you go. You can see how much it fell. We had about 90 dBs of noise, uh, dB microvolts, and then it's fallen right down. Um, if I add the pi capacitor, the low frequency component should also go down. 
you can, I don't know whether you'll see it or not, but it fell just as we expected. But you can see that still, there is some noise here. Now, obviously we've got dangling wires. This is a lab environment. In, a re in real life, this will be part of the product and, uh, and it will be nicely coupled. However, on purpose, I have added an extra loop in this flyback. And this jumper is what cuts the, the, the diameter of the loop. It shortens the loop. So right now, I'm getting lots of common mode, mode coupling between the primary and secondary of this isolated flyback. If I short this, I expect that to go down even more you see that it practically disappears. So with good PCB design and a good common mode filter, plus the differential model stage, I can make this chassisless two-wire flyback actually very, very quiet. It's down to less than 47 dB microvolts at the moment. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, please visit our website or the link below uh, for the fantastic workshops that we run for EMC filter design.